The Brian Grant Foundation provides tools to improve the well-being of people with Parkinson's. We focus a lot on exercise um, as well as nutrition and building a supportive community for people living with the disease and the people who love them. Um, we are very excited today to have with us Todd Vogt, who is an elite rowing, uh, um, well, we think he's a champion, but he's an elite rower. He ha uh, has been in the... Um, the World um, Rowing Championships, and he can tell you more about that. Todd is also living with early onset Parkinson's. He was diagnosed a couple years ago at the age of 43. Um, in addition to being an elite rower, Todd also teaches rowing um, here in the, at the Oregon Rowing Club, and he can again tell you more about that. Um, so, in, so we're super delighted to have him here today. And as I mentioned, the Brian Grant Foundation provides tools to improve the well-being of people with Parkinson's. We have programs in exercise. Um, we specifically look at the types of movements that are helpful um, for Parkinson's symptoms. Rowing has quite a few benefits for people with Parkinson's. For one thing, if you've ever been on a rowing machine or been or done rowing, you'll notice that your heart rate gets up. And so it can be a pretty good aerobic um, activity. Uh, additionally, the upper body strength that you gain from rowing um, helps with posture. And the, um, the movements involved in rowing um, can also... Um, help with rigidity that happens around the torso. So today what we hope, what we wanted Todd to do and what he will do today is he's going to tell you a little bit more about himself. He's going to take you through a few rowing exercises that you can do at home without equipment um, so that you can also gain the benefits of improved posture and, and, and rigidity. Um, and then he's going to talk to you a little bit about how to start out if you are inclined to get out on the water, which sounds wonderful, and it also comes with its challenges. And so we want to make sure people are aware of how you can get started if that's something you want to try to do this summer. Um, you can, just so everyone knows, again, at the bottom of the screen, there's a chat function. If you'd like to ask Todd a question, please do it so there. We will ask him your questions at the end of the um, at the end of the session. Um, we are also recording this session, though nobody will be shown in the recording, and the recording will be available on our website at briangrant.org in a couple of days following this session. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Todd. Oh, I should also mention Todd is on our program advisory committee. So Pro Todd is a member of our program advisory committee, which helps us shape our programs, guides our programs, and helps with general outreach. So um, that's another thing just to let people know. We do have a program advisory committee um, made of people with Parkinson's and the people who love them. If that is something that you are interested in getting involved with, please send us an email at info at briangrant.org. And with that, I will turn it over to Todd. Welcome, okay. Todd. Thanks, Katrina. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my garage gym. So um, as Katrina mentioned, I started rowing. I've been rowing for competitively for about 25 years. I started when I was a freshman in college. Uh, I rowed competitively for a long time um, throughout college, after college as a master's rower, as an adult. Uh, I've been coaching rowing for approximately 10 years. Actually, I guess it's been, yeah, almost 10 years I've been coaching. I've coached high school athletes, adults, adult beginners. Uh, I coached at the collegiate level for about five years as well, including uh, four years at a division one institution. Uh, I've coached national championship crews. Um, and recently, as Katrina mentioned, two, year, two summers ago, I was diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's. You can see my, my hand and my foot are moving a little bit. Um, I'm currently training full-time with the goal to hopefully qualify to compete for the U.S. at the uh, Tokyo Paralympics next summer. Uh, last summer, I rode for the U.S. national team in uh, in Australia in Austria and Linz, Austria at the 2019 World Championships, uh, representing the U.S. in the Paralympic category, where my boat finished in sixth place. And yeah, that's my bio in uh, short bio there. So, okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna spend a little time, sort of, uh, out demonstrating four exercises that sort of um, three exercises that encompass the rowing motion plus one complementary exercise. I'm going, to I'm going to show a lot of different variations of each exercise and how to put them all together into a workout. Then I'll spend a few minutes on the rowing machine just giving like a quick tutorial on the rowing machine and then giving you some information about rowing resources, I guess you would say. Okay, so four exercises that uh, sort of encompass the rowing motion. So first exercise is just a simple body weight squat. 
So the rowing motion, I should step back and say, uh, the, it, because of the sliding seat on the rowing machine and in the water, the majority of your energy comes from your legs. So I like to think of it as like legs, back, and then your arms. That's basically the rowing motion. The muscles get worked in the rowing motion. So first exercise is just a body weight squat, or you can use some weights. So simple body weight squat, feet about shoulder width apart, just come down and up. Simple body weight squat. You can see it from the side, coming down, coming up. That's the body weight version. You can, if you have any um, dumbbells, you can use dumbbells. You can hold them here, just come down, come up, come down, come up. And you can use, I have small dumbbells here. You can use soup cans, you can use anything else. If you have a single weight, a nice variation, you can see I have a kettlebell here, is what's called the goblet squat, where you hold the weight in front of you. This can be a dumbbell, a soup can, and you use this as like a counterbalance, and you come down, then come up. So there's exercise number one, it's just a squat. The second exercise is what's called a deadlift. So deadlift is uses a little bit of your legs and a lot of your low back. So it's similar to a squat, except it has more of a hinging motion from the hip. So a body weight deadlift, you're sort of hinged over from here, and you press your legs up and stand up. So press, stand up. Legs, press hips forward. This uses a lot of your like glutes, your hamstrings, your low back. Same thing, you can use dumbbell for this. You can come down, press up, hinge forward, press up. You can use a single dumbbell or a kettlebell. This is a really nice variation. We keep it here, you come down, press up. You see, as opposed to squat, you're sort of pivoted over a little more. You press, slide your hips forward. That's your, that's your classic deadlift right there. Okay, so squat, deadlift. Third exercise is a row, a bent over row. You can just do this while standing. So bend over at the hips, bring your elbows up past your, you know, up past your body. This will use your lats up here, use your shoulders. Once again, you can use the dumbbells. So you start from this hinge position here, bring the weights up, good. Another nice variation with this is uh, over here, another nice variation is you can use a strap. So attached to a pole over here, I've got a nice little rubber strap you can see. And from a standing position, you just pull the strap together. This is a really nice variation. The strap gives you a resistance. This is like a seated row. Okay, so exercise one is a squat. Exercise two is a deadlift. Exercise three is a row. So you got your legs in the squat, you got your low back and your butt in the deadlift, you got your shoulders and your lats in the row. So fourth exercise is a sort of a, is a complement to the other three. So fourth exercise is either a push up or a just a high plank. So from with your hands on the ground and your feet on the ground, just a standard push up, down, up. Now there are a lot of variations you can do with the push up to accommodate your fitness level. You can just do the standard style, hands on the ground, toes on the ground, or you can go knees on the ground, hands on the ground. That makes it a little easier. Or the final variation is a uh, you still can't do that. It's just starting from just holding a plank as well. Just staying right here. Hands on the ground, toes on the ground. This gives you pretty much the same benefit of the core strength, the shoulder strength, the chest strength. So, and that's a nice sort of um, balance to the other three exercises. Okay, so there's your four exercises. You have the squat, the deadlift, the seated row or the standing row or the bent over row, then either the push up or the high plank. So, now, to, uh, rowing is uh, what I call like a strength endurance activity. Um, the, each individual stroke is pretty light, but you know, over a while it gets your heart rate up. So to mimic that, if you wanted to take these four exercises and get a similar sort of workout that you would get if you were rowing, you can make a circuit of any sort of uh, design, but a nice circuit would be to take a very lightweight or no weight and say do 10 reps of the squat, then immediately do 10 reps of the deadlift, then immediately do 10 reps of the row, then immediately do say 10 push-ups or five push-ups or 
a 30 second plank, take a little break, then do that circuit like two, three, four times, whatever you feel like doing. That way it'll keep your heart rate up, just moving from one exercise, keeping the weight low and moving from one exercise to the next. That way you work your legs, you work your low back, you work your biceps, you work your shoulder. So, and you can modify that circuit to fit your needs. You can increase the weight and do less reps. You can take short breaks between each exercise. So, or if, like I said, you want to get more of a cardiovascular workout, keep the weight low and go from one exercise to the next with a break between each cycle. So that's a way to get a similar physical, uh, ex you know, physical exercise, similar you get if you're rowing on the water on the machine. So, okay, let's transition to the machine. So a couple quick things. I'm going to keep this relatively brief. I don't want to, um, have too much jargon or confuse people with too much uh, about the technique of it. So first thing, this is a concept two machine, concept two brand rowing machine. It's probably the most popular brand. It's the most commonly seen one. There's also another brand of rowing machine called the water rower, which is also really nice. Um, concept two is probably the more popular. Concept two is the one that's used by most rowing teams. It's the one that use, is used in most CrossFit gyms. And nowadays it's becoming relatively easier to find rowing machines at most gyms, you know, if, you, if your gym is open, that is. Okay, two little quick things about setup with a rowing machine that are probably the, most, the, the important things to just get you set up properly right from the beginning. On the foot stretcher assembly, there's a little bit of adjustability of the feet. You can move the feet up and down. You want to move your feet such that the strap goes right over the ball of your toes. So you move it up or down to accommodate such that the strap is right over the ball of your toes. Right over sort of like the ball, maybe a little bit of your midfoot. So, all right. So once you get it set up, strap in. The next most important thing, probably the more important thing, is there is a flywheel on the machine that provides the resistance. It's air resistance on a flywheel. So you can adjust how much air, you can adjust the damper setting to adjust the feeling of the flywheel. The flywheel setting on a Concept2 goes from one to 10, 10 being the damper is completely open. There's the most air resistance. It's gonna feel the most heavy on the handle. One is very little air resistance. It's gonna feel very light. So I would suggest starting at a low resistance. Right now I've got this on a two and a half for myself. You want it to feel like quick and light, like you're in a boat, like where you're in a quick, fast racing shell, as opposed to a big, heavy, slow rowboat. You also want it to be on the lower resistance setting to, because uh, that'll be a little easier on your joints. So. Set the, the flywheel down for about, like, right, like I said, I have it about a two and a half, maybe a three. Okay, that's, that'll get you set up properly. Okay. The rowing stroke, the real simple technique stuff, can be broken down into two phases. You've got the drive. That's the power application phase, the drive, where you're pulling on the oar. Then the part where you're reloading, getting ready for the next stroke. This is the recovery. So drive, recover. Drive, recover. Okay, the drive and the recovery are, compl are complements of one another. It can be broken down into three parts. This is, this, is really, this is the most important thing. Two ways to think about the drive. First way is uh, think about it broken down into legs, back, arms. Then the recovery is arms, back, legs. Legs, back, arms, arms, back, legs. The other way to think of this is push, then pull. So push, then pull. This is probably the most, the most common error you see a lot of times with newer people when they row is they use their back and their arms too early on the stroke. You want to make sure you use, use your legs, use a sliding seat. Majority, probably within a rowing stroke, 75% or whatever, you know, the majority of the energy that you put into each stroke should come in from your legs and your arms just kind of follow through. So. The other key thing is you want to make sure, kind of like a deadlift, is you want to be pivoting forward at the start of the stroke here so you can really push with your legs. You want to make sure you're, like I said, get your shoulders forward so you can really push with your legs. So arms, back, legs, push, pull. Push, pull. Push, pull. Just like the exercise, squat, deadlift, row. Squat, deadlift, row. Legs, back, arms. That's it, really, in a nutshell. So um, the other thing you might want to think about, 
that's nice to think about is the rowing stroke should have a smooth, con flowing, continuous motion. If anything, the drive is kind of a little harder, then the recovery is smooth. The recovery is if you were in a boat, that's where the boat is just gliding through the water. You do all the work on the drive, then let the boat glide through the water on the recovery. Kind of like if you were to do a push-up. When you do a push-up, you kind of go smooth to the ground, then you press up a little harder. Same with a squat. When you're doing a squat, you kind of go control to the ground and then you sort of press up. Rowing stroke is kind of the same thing. Press on the drive, a little smoother on the recovery. So, uh, yeah, and then the, once you get familiar with the stroke a little bit, you can do all kinds of different things with this machine. You can do intervals, you can do long endurance pieces, you can mix it up and do workouts where you include the exercise that I showed here as well as being on the machine. Yeah. As far as resources go too, Concept2 has a great website. The manufacturer of the rowing machine has a great website. They have a lot of technique videos. They also have a workout of the day section that's broken down into different categories between short, medium, and long. So if you want to know, have a workout for the, if you want to do a workout and you're not sure what to do, just go on their website, Concept2's website, find the workout of the day, and then you can choose, you know, choose amongst the workouts or look through their whole like library of workouts. They also have a lot of great technique videos uh, with a lot of like, elite level rowers demonstrating different parts of the stroke and different drills, technique drills. So that's your first resource is concept two is a great resource for um, anything about the rowing machine, workouts, technique, you know, physiology, endurance, things like that. So, and like I said, uh, with the, with CrossFit, with CrossFit and a lot of like high intensity exercise, there's a lot more uh, rowing machines available, whether it's in CrossFit gyms or in regular gyms or hotel gyms or if you have, you know, have one at home. So uh, there's that. If you want to get on the water, which is awesome, being on the water is really fun. Um, being on the rowing machine is kind of like being on a treadmill. If you're a runner, it like gives you a great exercise. It gives you a great workout and is great exercise. It gives you a lot of like the physical benefits of it. Being on the water has all the physical benefits, but you're also like moving through the water. You can feel the boat moving underneath you. Uh, and normally times you might be in a team boat with, three or seven other people which is great it's like a really fun team environment so if you want to get on the water and learn a little more about like getting on the water technique there's um here in portland for example i coach at a club called station l rowing club it's right in downtown portland we have adult learn to row classes there's several other clubs in town there's lake oswego community rowing in lake oswego they do learn to row classes for beginners for adult beginners there's also in vancouver uh, in Vancouver, Washington, there's a rowing club there that also has introductory uh, classes. If you have high school kids, there's several high school clubs in town here. Most towns, most uh, medium-sized and bigger cities do have rowing clubs for both adults and for high school kids too. Yeah, and you can just seek them out, um, you know, in your Google search. So, but here in Portland, I coach at Station L Rowing Club. They have a really nice website. There's Oregon Rowing Unlimited by the Selwood Bridge, Lake Oswego Community Rowing at Lake Oswego. And like I said, Vancouver Rowing Club in Vancouver. Yeah. And those places should be able to get you on the water. Even now, under the, with the current situation with coronavirus, they're, they're still doing learn to row classes. I know, for example, this morning, I saw a learn to row class at Station L when I was coaching down there this morning. So, yeah, feel free to, and that's pretty much it right there. You have your, your land exercises, which mimic the rowing stroke, some basics on the rowing machine, push, then pull, legs, back, arms, and have fun. You can do go fast. You can just cruise along, maybe get on the water and that's it. I know Katrina wants to do some Q and A. So let's do that. Let's yeah. move on to that phase. Yeah. Great. So Iris, um, I know we had a few questions. Um, I'll go ahead and let you ask, I'll ask Todd. Okay, great. Um, can you hear me, Todd? Yep. Good. So we did have a question. Um, uh, let's see. I hope to ask Todd about the Paralympic classification as TT does not yet to yet acknowledge. Let's see. Andrew from the UK, PD okay. table tennis. Oh, table tennis. Okay. I hope um, to ask Todd about the Paralympics class classification as TT does not yet, to my knowledge, allow. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, uh, I'm. Yeah, I think it does make sense. He's, they must not within table tennis. I'm assuming you can. You might not be able to get classified as as somebody with Parkinson's, which 
Um, sure, I guess it's possible. Um, within the rowing world, let's say I'm classified to, to row as a Paralympic athlete by both U.S. Rowing, the U.S. governing body, and FISA, the international um, governing body of rowing in the world. So there are three Paralympic categories. There's what's called PR1, which is for athletes that really have only use of their upper torso and their arms. They're in a fixed seat. The seat doesn't move, and they're strapped into the seat. That's PR1. There's also what's called PR2, which is anything from the torso up, so they can use their torso, their shoulders, their arms. That's also a fixed seat. The seat doesn't slide. Uh, they're strapped in as well. Then there's the category that I'm in, which is called PR3. PR3 is like a catch-all category, and that includes people who have neurological conditions, um, people who are blind, people who are amputees. For example, the boat I rode in last summer for the USA, for the US at the World Championships, my partner was a single leg amputee. Um, so yeah, that's the category I fall into is PR3. In order to be classified, you have to be observed by a team of doctors and they take you through a battery test that measures like your wrist flexion, your joint mobility, how you move, how you balance. And then they just assess, you know, how, how much you're impacted by your medical condition. So, and my, my medical, my condition is impacted enough that they have deemed me that I am, uh, you know, able to compete as a Paralympic athlete in the PR3 category. Got it. Okay. Um, how does exercising affect your Parkinson's symptoms and for how long afterwards? Um, it helps a lot. Uh, particularly, I, you know, I do a lot of different exercises. I, I bike a lot. I lift weights. Uh, I row, certainly row a lot as well. Uh, for me personally, rowing seems to help the most. I think it's because, especially when I row in the water and I have to use both my hands, I definitely feel better. I feel like my tremor is reduced after the fact. When I'm rowing, it's, this is really interesting. Like you can see my hand is moving pretty good right now. Uh, when I'm rowing, like, I have no tremor when I'm rowing, especially on the water. I think it's because wow. there's so much sort of technical demand of using both hands and using my whole body. Mm -hmm. My tremor will come back pretty quickly as soon as I stop rowing. But while I'm actually rowing, there's no tremor. And when I get done, like... I feel much more relaxed as well. That's one of those symptoms that I have is just like some anxiety associated with my, with Parkinson's like induced anxiety. So I'm like much more relaxed after rowing and exercising. So yeah, it definitely seems to improve my uh, well-being quite a bit when I exercise. So that's great. Yeah. Um, are you aware of any other Paralympic or Olympians from any sport who also have Parkinson's? No, I don't know of anybody yet. Well, okay, not within the, um, the Paralympic sort of world. The only athlete I know, of, and he's certainly an excellent athlete, is Jimmy Choi. Um, <laughs> he's the uh, American Ninja Warrior uh, sort of specialist. But within, certainly within the rowing world, I don't know of anybody with Parkinson's. And, and I spent some time at the Olympic Training Center back in, in uh, earlier in February, and there's a bunch of Paralympic athletes from other sports, but none of them. I, I none of them. I, I'm almost certain none of them had Parkinson's. So I think. I'm one of the few that that's sort of a Paralympic athletes who has Parkinson's but yeah like I said and Jim there there are other athletes out there like Jimmy Choi for example who, who's really great athletes he's he's pretty phenomenal so he should yeah be but within Olympian, the yeah. <laughs> actual Paralympic world I, I don't really know of anybody with Parkinson's so yeah um and then one more question is there any research related to rowing exercise which relates to Parkinson's symptoms neurological or physical um, yeah, as far as rowing directly, I'm not sure, but certainly there's a lot, of, I think there's a fair amount of evidence out there that shows that like high intensity exercise and aerobic exercise really are uh, helpful for uh, Parkinson's. You know, I'm not necessarily, I'm not a clinician or anything like that, so I don't want to speak to this, but I'm pretty sure that's the case that there's evidence that high intensity uh, aerobic exercise, that aerobic exercise helps, endurance exercise helps, and like any sort of movement exercise helps as well. So I'm pretty sure there's a fair amount of uh, evidence out there that exercise in general helps with Parkinson's. So. Great. For sure. Yep. All right. I think that was the, the last of the questions, unless anybody else has one, you can use the chat function real quick before we say goodbye. Nope. Okay. Well, we, I, Hey Todd, thank you for spending your morning with us. I really appreciate that. I really love that little circuit you gave us. I think there's a lot of great things in there. I hope other people on here were inspired to maybe pick up a rowing machine, maybe get out on the water, but if not, you have a few exercises to add to your, um, 
to your regimen at home. Uh, as, I, as we said before, we are recording this. It will be on briangrant.org in the coming days. Um, and with that, thank you, Todd. We will say goodbye to everyone. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Have a good Katrina. day, everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you.